Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at this new telescope from Apertura, the Apertura 75Q refractor telescope, which was sent to me by Highpoint Scientific for the purpose of this review. I am not getting paid for this review or anything. This is a completely independent review. However, this scope was sent to me for free to test it and then I will have to send it back and it actually took me a while to uh, get some decent weather and to rig everything up uh, it's december so clear nights are very sparse today is uh, almost a full moon but the weather should be good so i'm hoping to collect some ha data of one of the targets i haven't made up my mind actually just yet and we're gonna see how this telescope performs it's actually quite similar to my william optics gt81 which i would normally use this is the scope that i own uh, but there are a couple of differences, so we're going to take a look at some differences in the design and also I'm going to shoot a target that I have previously shot with this scope and we're going to see how the images compare. The focal length is actually quite similar, so hopefully we are going to be comparing apples to apples. This telescope is 405 millimeters of focal length. This one is 478, uh, which with the uh, 0.8 reducer that is actually necessary in the scope, and I'm going to get to it why in just a second, it goes down to 378, 38 something. So almost 400, and this one is 405, so this actually has a little bit more reach. And this telescope is a quintuplet Petzval design, which means there are five optical elements inside the tube, uh, which means that this is a fully corrected field suitable for astrophotography. You don't need any corrector between the scope and the camera, like a field flattener. The field is completely flat, the field of view, meaning that uh, when you focus in the center, the corners are also in focus. This one is a triplet, which means that there are only three optical elements inside. And with triplets, it is necessary to add a field flattener at the back, which is like a fourth element to correct the flatness of the field. For this one, there is an optional reducer, which I also have from High Point uh, right here. This is only optional if you want to uh, make your focal length a little bit shorter, a little bit more wider field of view and a little bit better sort of uh, focal ratio. The aperture on this one, the front aperture is 75 millimeters, like the name 75Q might suggest. This one is 81, so this one is slightly larger. This one collects slightly more light, but honestly, it's it's really comparable. It's, I would say it's pretty much the same kind of ballpark. So I have this scope right here on my mount already. I have a second um, guide scope. Normally I would use the William Optics long wide guide scope. This one I tried to fit and actually protrude it into my filter wheel. So the fact that the guide scope shoe is off to the side and on the back of the OTA it's a little bit cumbersome if you have a larger guide scope. I like what Willy Optics did here, which, which means that um, you can actually put your guide scope right here on the, on the top and on the front. It makes for a better weight distribution than this. But honestly, it's, it's probably fine with the weight. Honestly, with modern mounts, if you use it like a harmonic mount, then you know balancing the weight is not that important anyways. And it also makes it easier to carry the scope because you have unobstructed handle and right here the handle is a little bit cumbersome because there's a guide scope like on top of the handle. So we're going to rig it up and we're going to like, you know, connect the cables and like everything is from the hardware is here, but we just need to connect the cables. So just to go quickly, we have the Aperture 75Q, we have the guide scope mini from ZWO, uh, 120mm mini guide camera, we have a ZWO automatic focuser. Uh, which was very easily connected to the scope. Then we have a field rotator from um, Pegasus Optics, the Falcon, the original one. And then we have a filter wheel from ZWO and a 294 mm Pro also from ZWO, a mono camera with a filter wheel. So I have HA filters and also RGB filters. I have a bunch of different filters here. I'm going to today use only HA, maybe sulfur because the moon is going to be pretty big. And we're going to see how it behaves. Uh, the scope actually comes with um, both a loss mandy plate. This is actually what's in the box. If you have a larger mount, you can use a loss mandy plate. If you have a smaller mount like I do, there's also an included uh, Vixen style dovetail that I have replaced in order to put it on this mount. But if you can use a loss mandy, it is recommended to use a loss mandy. It's larger, it's more kind of a robust. 
Um, so yeah, did I wanted to uh, say anything about this scope? I don't know. I mean, visually, it looks really nice. This uh, hood kind of extends, so we can extend this. This is how it looks. Uh, similar to this one, we're gonna see how the images will turn out to be, but uh, so far so good. So uh, let's get it outside and let's test it out. So I just finished a very good night with this setup. I was shooting the Heart Nebula in hydrogen and oxygen. And yeah, it was clear most of the night, not the entire night, but most of the night, which is still pretty good for like December here in Poland. So next up, when we get another clear night, which is not anytime soon, unfortunately, I'm gonna put in the reducer uh, that came with this scope and we're gonna see uh, in the end how the images turn out to be with the reducer and without the reducer, star shapes and everything. So yeah, let's pack it up and let's, I guess, wait for another clear night. And we are back at the studio. Luckily, I was able to get another clear night, uh, just a few nights after the first night. And I was able to test the Apertura 75Q with the reducer. I'm gonna show you how the reducer actually looks in the scope. We're gonna take it off. I have actually stripped down the scope already out of the camera, the focuser and everything. I've put on the Los Mandy plate, which I mentioned in the intro already here, because I'm going to be shipping this scope back to High Point Scientific uh, soon, like I also mentioned. So let's actually take a look at some images. I have been shooting the Heart Nebula, which is nice and high in the sky uh, in December uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. And also this is a target that I have previously shot with my uh, with my William Optics scope. So let's compare how the stacks look uh, from this scope with and without the reducer and compared to my old stacks shot with this scope. So what I have right here is I have two stacks of hydrogen alpha. Each of these stacks is about three to four hours uh, of integration. The one on the left is the one taken without the reducer. So it is a little bit more zoomed in. And the other one, the one on the right, is taken with the reducer, uh, which is a little bit uh, of a wider field of view and a little bit of a better signal to noise ratio because the scope becomes a faster focal ratio with the reducer. Uh, yes, and these are stacks because um, if I were to show you single images, we would be seeing some calibration artifacts that go away with calibration. So let's not focus on these. And also some of the features of the image also might not be visible in a single exposure and it might get pronounced like some, some issues with the optics might get pronounced once you actually stack your images. So that's why I want to show you those stacks. And also I don't want to show you final images because these are processed, sharpened, whatnot. So I don't want to, you know, hide how the optics actually look like by the veil of, you know, some clever processing. So, uh, and here, uh, here is the shot uh, from the William Optics scope uh, that I'm going to take a look also at. And as you can see, the sort of field of view is comparable, all three of these images. So, yeah, uh, I mean, overall, the images look great. Let's actually zoom in to the center first to like one to two ratio or something. And let's also apply the same kind of zoom here. And as we can see in the center of the image, the stars look really nice and sharp. Um, I was using the electronic focuser, the ZWO EAF. So the focus is as good as it gets and there is no like, you know, there's no issue with focusing. So the focusing is not a factor here. You know, we are just looking at the sharpest possible images because I was using the electronic focuser. I just want to make that clear. So as you can see, actually, I think the one, uh, the stack taken with the reducer is a little bit sharper to my eye. If we look at some of these stars, like for instance, this star compared to this star, I think this one is a little bit tighter. So I think the sharpness of the scope is actually even improved when you add another optical element, the reducer here in the back. But even without the reducer, it's, it's also a pretty nice and sharp and something that can definitely be even improved when it comes to sharpness and post-processing. Uh, and overall, the star shapes look pretty good, you know, what you would expect from the center of the image. And if we go to the corner, let's go to like top left corner, 
These are of course stacking artifacts, so please disregard, disregard these. And here, again, this is a little bit of a different star field because the image on the right is wider when it comes to its field of view. And if you look at the shapes of the stars, they are pretty much perfect. Again, these stars are a little bit tighter, a little bit sharper uh, with the reducer than without, but the star shapes look pretty much perfect to me. They're not elongated in any ways. There's no astigmatism, no comma, nothing like this. If you go to this corner, for instance, pretty much the same thing, no issue here. If you go to this corner, uh, again, no issues here. The stars look pretty much perfect here. And in this fourth corner, probably it's going to be the same. Yeah, the stars look pretty much perfect here. One thing that's important to note is that I was using with this scope the ZW294MM Pro camera, which is a micro four thirds sensor, uh, which is a kind of a small sensor. This scope supports up to full frame cameras and the artifacts and problems with star shapes in the corners usually are the most pronounced in the corners of the largest field, uh, largest sensor that the telescope supports. So with the micro four third sensor, we are not really looking at the corners of the full image circle of this telescope. However, I don't have a bigger sensor to test. And honestly, a lot of people probably using a refractor like this would be using uh, a sensor like micro four thirds or maybe APS-C and not full frame sensor. So if you have a sensor like, an, like MFT, like I have, the stars uh, in the corners are going to be pretty much perfect for you. If I have a larger sensor, you might have to do some testing of your own because uh, I just don't have a camera with a larger sensor. So keep that in mind. And if we compare it to my stack from the William Optics scope, uh, let's apply this zoom. How do I do this? Uh, like this. As you can see, these stars are actually showing a little bit of elongation here in this corner. And it's the same goes for, for this corner that I've been checking out before, maybe even more pronounced here. So let's go to the top left corner again, which means that the Apertura scope seems to be uh, an even better optically scope than my William Optics scope. Maybe I should actually replace my William Optics scope with this Apertura. Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I should, because from what I can tell, the star shapes on the Apertura 75Q are a little bit better than in my scope. So I don't know, maybe maybe it is time to switch. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually think about this. Um, but anyways, like when it comes to sharpness, uh, let's go to the center of the image again. So this is my William Optics scope and these are the aperturas, both with the reducer and without the reducer. And I think overall, when it comes to sharpness, hmm, I would say that the Apertura 75Q with the reducer is the sharper of, of, is the sharpest of all of these three images. So this looks to be a really, really fantastic scope. Uh, by the end of the video, I'm going to show you the final image that I have been able to process in the HOO, like a dual color uh, palette from the Heart Nebula with the reducer. I think I like the field of view with the reducer. So stick to the end of the video if you want to see this. But now I want to show you actually how to take off this reducer. And there's one quick I wanted to mention with this scope. Actually, there are two things worth mentioning. Um, one of them is that the throw of the focuser it's not very large on this scope. It's like three centimeters if we look at this scale right here. So it, it only extends kind of this much. And if we retract it, this is as much of how we can retract it. And then when we extend it, it's like three centimeters. Yeah, exactly three centimeters. So this is not a lot. This is not a lot. In my William Optics scope that I have here, um, the focuser is not extended. So it's not really an example to show but it extends to like eight or something centimeters, way more than this. And typically if you have a good back focus here, it's not an issue, but if you want to switch between different cameras, like planetary cameras, solar cameras, adding barlows, you know, whatnot, sometimes having a bigger throw gives you a little bit more flexibility when it, flexibility when it comes to uh, not having to add or remove, you know, spacers like these. Uh, 
So you can just use the throw of the focuser to focus with different cameras. But uh, even with three centimeters, if you use the spacers or if you just stick to one camera, this is perfectly fine and you are going to be having no issues with focusing. One other thing is that, okay, let's actually take off the reducer because the reducer is right here. This is actually a pretty clever design. If I'm able to unscrew this, hold on, I need to get my gloves. You know how it is with these spacers that sometimes get stuck and you cannot unscrew them. The same thing can happen with pretty much everything that you screw to the back of your scope. So hopefully, yes, now it went. So here's the reducer and it goes, it looks like this and it goes all the way into the tube, which is really nice. Let me just put it like this, take off the gloves. I really like this design because typically with field flatteners, the field flattener would kind of stick here and kind of prolong your entire imaging train. For instance, on this scope, as you can see, the field flattener looks like this and it just adds this kind of a length to my imaging train. And with this scope, this kind of element, that's it's a pretty kind of similar length, just goes inside the tube here, which I really, really like. It doesn't really uh, prolong the kind of size of your imaging train as much as with other telescopes, so I love this. But the one issue that I had is that both the scope with the reducer, without the reducer and with the reducer, they claim to have a 55 millimeter of back focus, which is like the industry standard. And here with my kind of setup right here, without this, this is just a, this is just a glorified kind of lens cap, dust cap. The camera, the ZW294MM Pro, is sticked directly to the filter wheel. And then I have a rotator and they both have like 35 millimeters of back focus. And then I would use one of these spacers from Explore Scientific to add another 15, or actually 20, to get to 55. And when I was using the 20 millimeter spacer with this setup without the reducer, I was able to perfectly focus, no problems. But when I used the reducer, I actually had to take off the spacer, the 20 millimeter spacer completely. So I was just having like 35, 36 millimeters of back focus here to the camera sticked directly to this reducer and only that way I was able to get the focus. When I had the spacer, I was actually running out of space here in the focuser. I was having to retract it all the way and, and the stars were still not in focus. I had to re retract it even more, which was physically impossible and that's why I had to remove the spacer. So just keep in mind that for whatever reason, if you want to use the reducer, which I would highly recommend because you get, you know, sharper images apparently and uh, all the benefits of that, I would recommend using the reducer, but just bear in mind that you might need to adjust the back focus on your camera by like taking off a spacer or maybe replacing a spacer with a smaller spacer. So just keep that in mind. Um, and yes, overall, I think I would highly recommend this telescope. Uh, Apparently it's even better than my William Optics scope that I have been using for a few years. So maybe I need to uh, switch it up. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the scope is really well built. It supports both Los Mandy and uh, Vixen style dove plates, which I love. I love the fact that the reducer goes into the scope. I also kind of like the fact that the um, guide scope shoe is on the side. So I can just carry the scope like a normal person without having the guide scope here like I have with my William Optics scope again. So yeah, I began to actually love this telescope and having to send it back, hmm, I don't know, maybe I should try to actually replace it, uh, uh, use this instead of my scope. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, thank again, thanks again, Hypen Scientific for providing this scope for the purposes of this review. Uh, links to the telescope and other stuff uh, that you can get from High Point uh, are going to be down below in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and now let's see the final images of the Hart Nebula that I was able to get with the Apertura 75Q with the 0.75 reducer and see you in my next video. Bye!